Overnight, we had the EU talking about sanctioning coal. When, how close are we, do you think, uh, to, to LNG being, uh, being in the crosshairs? Well, I think it's a really interesting question. I think at this point in time, our expectation is that, you know, Russian gas will still flow and it will still flow into the EU, but at a much diminished rate from before. Uh, we expect that European buyers will continue to continue their existing long-term supply contracts, um, but bringing brought down to take or pay levels. So effectively taking the minimum they have to. So the real winner from this, in my view, is basically LNG, and especially US LNG, which is in a really kind of pole position, if you like, to you know bring new projects on stream quickly and to ultimately supply the European market. We're in 2022 now. In less than 20 years, 18 or so, by 20, 2040, global LNG demand is expected to double. The situation uh, in Ukraine now, and also obviously with regards to uh, Russia as a supplier of gas, does that change that outlook at all? And does it uh, uh, boost it or actually diminish it? Yeah, so I think net, net, we think that it, 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 you're right, because like now it really kind of doubles uh, over the next 20 years. And in some ways, you can think of this as almost a golden age for LNG. It's really a case of now or never. Um, so you see lots of kind of projects potentially being sanctioned in the U.S. And, and Qatar. So our expectation is that over the next couple of years, you can see almost up to 60 million tons of new FIDs being taken. So that's final investment decisions uh, being taken to bring LNG onto the market. Now, it's a really a story of two, two continents, if you like. On the one hand, you've got Asian demand, which has always been the traditional stronghold, if you like, of LNG demand. And in the near term, we do see a bit of a pullback. So just to put that into perspective, uh, in the last quarter, uh, so this quarter this year, we've already seen a 10% contraction in Asian LNG demand as a whole. Uh, and if you look at places like India, for example, that contraction is even worse. So we're talking about things like minus 25%. Even in China, it, it, you know, imports have been down around 11%. But we expect that volume to come back on in the second half of this decade as new supplies come out stream and prices ultimately soften. The really interesting bit here is the EU. And as a result, I guess, of some of the sanctions and the reduced, uh, you know, kind of pipeline flows from Russia into the EU, LNG then needs to pick up the slack. And so in our, in our latest forecast, we actually anticipate uh, LNG demand in Europe to double over the, over the next uh, decade. So that's kind of interesting because it does create lots of opportunities uh, for potential suppliers uh, to the extent you can bring new supply to the market. Um, but I think there's something to consider also, which is the impact of higher prices and what that does for demand destruction. So as I mentioned, potentially some demand destruction we're already seeing in Asia. Yeah. Over the decades, as you've seen in Europe, there has been a very concerted effort to kind of wean itself off fossil fuels. So in some ways, higher prices actually act against the continent and act against gas demand in terms of actually accelerating the energy transition.